Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first ever Lake Carve virtual Christmas tasting. We're kind of technophobes here at Lake Carve, so it's a miracle that we've managed to do anything like this. In fact, half of our staff members didn't even know what YouTube was until I uh, proposed the idea. Uh, my name's Daniel. I'm the shop manager here at Lake Carve de Perenne. And I'm joined by my colleague, Stu. Hello. I've been drinking wine professionally for 13 years. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it whilst working in restaurants up and down the UK, starting in the Isle of Skye and making my way down to glamorous Farnborough. That was a cracking move. Um, and I ended up working in the wonderful world of retail at Lake Carve de Perrin, surrounded by all of these fantastic natural wines. My colleague, Stu, uh, he's came late to the wine industry, but he's doing his utmost to drink as much as possible, as quickly as possible, to gain as much knowledge as possible. He had a glittering uh, career in the care sector before coming here. So, it's enough rambling, and without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's get started. First up is the Cantina Bernardi Prosecco. Uh, hopefully you've already cracked into this and are sitting there enjoying it whilst listening to me waffle on about it. Um, Cantina Bernardi, based in a really beautiful idyllic uh, Italian town called Refrontolo uh, near Treviso. Um, they are a few kilometers away from an ancient water mill and um, that is why they have that particular thing on their label. Now for me Prosecco has always been something I've kind of steered away from. It's not really my bag um, but this one's actually really delightful. It's uh, got a fantastic nose of kind of pear, white flowers, um, maybe kind of slight almondy flavors in there as well. And on the palate Those flavors really follow on. So you're getting a lovely soft rounded palette with uh, flavors of pear, maybe a bit of uh, kind of comfy stewed apples. Um, and again, that slight kind of hint of bitter almond on the finish. And with Prosecco, it finishes slightly off dry. So I think to start with, this is an absolute little winner. And um, cheers. So next up, we have the 2019 vintage of Sauvignon Blanc from Tafare Ra. Uh, so this LBC comes in at 13%. Uh, the guys are based down in Renwick, which is a sub-region of the very well-known Marlborough. Marlborough, of course, famous for its fantastic, bright, fruity Sauvignon Blancs. Tafare Ra is uh, owned and managed by the lovely couple, uh, Jason and Anna Flowerday. They acquired the property back in 2003. Since then, they've been uh, working towards uh, organic and biodynamic principles. Uh, they favor and strongly believe that uh, biodiversity is the key to making really high quality fruit. Um, so they work very much in tune with nature, uh, favoring smaller yields of high quality juice rather than sort of mass produced uh, higher volumes. Uh, and you can really taste it in, in their wines. Uh, I'm actually a really big fan of, uh, of their whole range. Um, they are also famous for making quite a few Alsatian varieties. Uh, and they were somewhat pioneers in the region as well uh, for making a, a blended variety there, their Toru, uh, which is a blend of, of Alsatian varieties. Uh, they really sort of pioneered this because it was very much just single varietals of Sauvignon and Riesling uh, in the region. Uh, and since then, uh, other, uh, other wine producers have, uh, have taken on this method of uh, making blended wines, uh, knowing that they can find success in the markets. Right, so on to the tasting. Here we have lovely little aromas of uh, the classic gooseberry, which you're going to expect from, uh, from any New Zealand uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, 
nice little bit of uh, passion fruit, some tropical notes coming through there, and then definitely a very little herbal kind of uh, edge to it also. Um, cool, on the palate. We have the same flavors coming through there. Really great acidity, as you're gonna expect from uh, any Sauvignon Blanc. Really nice herbal notes there. Length still going, really nice minerality, lovely long finish. Uh, beautiful example of a great little Sauvignon Blanc. As far as pairing goes, uh, I love just uh, having some cherry tomatoes. So obviously you can extend that to a salad, classic pairing for a Sauvignon. Uh, any seafood dishes, uh, you know, the, the citrusy, uh, just gonna go great with a nice little bit of uh, grilled white fish. Um, you're gonna have a really nice time. So without further ado, on to the next one. So on to wine number three, which is a Trebbiano d'Abruzzo from Mascherelli, 2019 vintage and weighs a pretty little 13% ABV, obviously from Abruzzo in Italy. Uh, Gianni Mascherelli and his wife, uh, Mar Marina Svetic, uh, they're really the kind of shining lights in, in Abruzzo. They started changing people's perception of the region by creating wines that were complex, interesting, um, delicate, and just really, really delicious. A lot of their wines have really um, kind of uh, received almost like a cult status within the wine world. Um, Abruzzo really used to produce quite kind of mass-produced wines, really high yields, not a lot of care and attention in the vineyards, and was just kind of known for average plonk, I suppose. Mascherelli wines are, are fantastic, um, this uh, Trebbiano is their Gianni range, which I suppose is their more kind of entry level offering, but certainly no less quality uh, in the glass at all. In fact, I think for what you pay, you get a stunning uh, wine. Um, so, 100% Trebbiano on the nose. Quite aromatic. You get flavors of kind of yellow plum, uh, apple. Kind of stone fruits, maybe some apricot, maybe some roasted almonds in there as well. You also get a sense of uh, of, of a richness uh, in the wine. Um, mm. On the palate, yeah, really pure. I think that comes from the wine being fermented in stainless steel. So very pure, very crisp. Again, those flavors of kind of apricot and uh, apple transfer onto the palate as well. And you're left with this really lovely, uh, juicy uh, finish, which comes from that kind of lemon, lemon rind uh, acidity uh, coming in at the end there. I think it's an absolutely little cracker, Christmas cracker. See what I did there? Um, and as my Dutch wife would say, prost. And on to the last white uh, of this evening, of this set, uh, we have the Radford Dale Vinum, uh, which is 100% Chenin Blanc, coming in at 12.5%. Uh, so these guys are based over uh, near uh, Stellenbosch, obviously the very famous region over in uh, South Africa, not too far from Cape Town. Uh, they're actually sort of just behind Somerset West, near the beautiful uh, Helderberg Mountain. So uh, if anyone's been out there, you know how, how beautiful it is. So Radford Dale was founded uh, back in 1998 by good friends and drinking buddies Ben Radford and Alex Dale. So after several years of working together, Ben decided to head back to his home country uh, over in Australia, uh, while Alex stayed in South Africa with the ambition to become one of the best known brands in, in South Africa, uh, which I, I think he achieved. So let's uh, have a little taste and, uh, and see what we think. So on the nose, we, we have some white peach, some apple flavors coming through, 
little bit of uh, baking spices from the oak there, I think. Um, let's go ahead and have a little taste, see what we think. So on the palate, we've got some really nice tropical notes coming through. Some delicious pineapple. Uh, it's got a really good uh, bit of extra weight and body to it. Uh, but it's really nicely balanced out with uh, great acidity, uh, with a nice long finish and really good minerality as well. So it's going to be a great little uh, wine to pair with some delicious foods. Uh, I'd recommend some, some fascia fishes are going to be great, some salmon. Uh, it's also going to go well with like a chicken Sunday roast. Um, also, you could do like I do, uh, just put, grab a bottle of this and uh, pop your favourite movie on and have it with some popcorn. It's a great pairing, so I hope you enjoy. Uh, on to the next one. Cheers! First red of the proceedings, and we are heading to Spain to Bierzo, which is kind of northwest Spain, uh, to a producer called Gregory Perez. This is his uh, wine Brezzo, uh, 2019, uh, coming in at a 13.5%. Uh, it's made uh, with a grape called Menthea. Um, Menthea is indigenous to that part of Spain. Uh, fairly uncommon in the UK market at the moment, but um, if you kind of like wines like Gamay or Pinot Noir, then you should hopefully like uh, Menthea. Gregory Perez started his uh, wine uh, endeavours in France, but his uh, friends and kind of, I suppose, the, the drawback to his native Spain uh, was the reason he moved back to Bierzo. Um And he's been making wine there for a number of years. And he really makes wine based on kind of the organic and biodynamic principles that we've we've talked about previously. Um, absolute utmost respect to nature, and really believes that a healthy vineyard is a vineyard full of life, with the uh, without any chemicals used. Um, it's not certified organic or biodynamic, but he certainly uses those practices uh, to make the wine. So, Menthea. Uh, You've got these uh, fantastic notes of uh, kind of black cherry, pomegranate, maybe a touch of licorice and spice there as well. A really beautiful color in the glass, really deep red and quite bright uh, as well. Uh, on the palate, yeah, really juicy. Again, those kind of dense black fruits and maybe a touch of kind of raspberry and red currant shine through but you're left with this lovely almost slightly kind of orangey uh, finish which really rounds the wine off really beautifully uh, you know great with kind of classic Spanish uh, foods like, uh, you know chorizo and paella and things like that um, but I think just great on its own uh, as well to be perfectly honest with you uh, could be quite happily sitting by a fire demolishing a bottle of that over the Christmas period. So Menthea, great variety, definitely check it out, and uh, Gregory's an incredibly talented winemaker. On to the next one. Tasting of threads. So next up, we have the Rosso de Montepulciano from Innocente. Uh, this guy comes in at 13 and a half percent. So over in Tuscany, one of my favourite regions of Italian red wines, makes some of my favourite wines in the world. So a nice little bit of uh, history. Some of the buildings date back to the 13th century. Uh, so we've been making wine in that area for a really long time. Uh, the current owner, uh, Innocenti, uh, Vittorio Innocenti, uh, gave up his uh, his previous job as a philosophy teacher, uh, spent more time in the cellars and working the vineyards uh, with the help of his wife, uh, Maria Rosa, their son, Tommaso, and also his brother, Mario. Uh, so they've uh, done six months of maturation in old oak barrels, uh, very large oak barrels, so there's not a huge amount of oak influence uh, coming in on the wine. Uh, with the grape variety, we're looking at predominantly Sangiovese and a couple of other local varietals blended in there. Um, and so let's have a taste. 
It's a beautiful color off the bat there. Lovely sort of light, pale ruby color, a little bit of garnet around the edges, uh, alluding to, to the age of the wine. Uh, pretty excited to try this one. Let's have a little smell. Yeah, that's beautiful. Really nice, deep sort of forest fruit flavors, uh, nice and earthy, uh, some cherries in there. Absolutely delicious, uh, inviting me in for a sip. So uh, cheers. Beautiful little wine. Absolutely uh, love my Tuscans. So here we've got the uh, the cherries coming through, all those forest flavors are still there. Lovely and sort of earthy and sort of very autumnal. So uh, lovely little wine. Uh, it's all balanced out with some nice, uh, really good acidity. Um, it's going to pair great with some food because of that. Uh, also some tannins there holding it all together, giving it a great length, making the flavor kind of stick in the palate there. Uh, absolutely delicious. Everything I, I look for in a nice, uh, nice sort of nice Tuscan wine. Uh, you know, I happily demolish a whole plate of charcuterie or, you know, beef roast. Uh, these are the kind of things I'm thinking of with this wine. Even just a log fire and a second glass, maybe some cheese or something like that. I think you're going to have a really, really lovely time. So I hope you enjoy it as well and cheers. Okay, on to the next red, we have a Merlot from uh, Metic, uh, which is a uh, winery based in Chile, uh, 2019 and 13.5%. This wine is made by a chap called Luca Hodgkinson, and actually these wines, the whole Metic range is made specifically for us here at Lake Carve. Um, and who doesn't love a Merlot, eh? Nice and jammy and plummy and delicious. Um, so based in the Colchagio Valley. Luca actually has his own business sourcing grapes. Um, Chile is a bit of a weird country in some respects because they actually have some amazing uh, vineyards, really old vineyards, uh, hundreds of years old. And these grapes just get bought up for big kind of blends of big cooperatives. Whereas, you know, in, in Europe, they would be highly regarded as old, you know, old vineyards and making really premium wines. But in Chile and uh, some extent Argentina, they just go into the big mass produced blends. So Luca finds these cool little vineyards and sources the grapes. A lot of them work organically or biodynamically, and then he kind of blends them to make to make these wines. And um, I think they're fantastic for the for the price. They're awesome. Um, actually, a little interesting fact, just in case you ever get asked this on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Metic. Uh, is a term which means uh, in a Greek ancient city, a metic was a foreigner that was established there with no political rights and no properties under their ownership. They did, however, participate in uh, participate to the cultural and economic life of the city. Metics were seekers of a better life and immigrants in a foreign country. The bottle of wine you are holding is a result of immigration of foreigners, immigration of grapes, and exportation of wine to third countries. So there we go. One to a little fun fact to hold on to there. So on the nose, kind of as you'd expect, you get those really rich, plummy, jammy notes coming out, but also really kind of hints of a uh, slight kind of bell pepper, a little bit of uh, coffee grind as well uh, on the palate. Yeah, I mean kind of everything you'd expect from a Merlot. Really nice and rounded and plummy and juicy. It's got nice acidity there, which kind of keeps the wine fresh. Isn't overwhelmingly kind of jammy as a lot of uh, a lot of kind of Chilean wines can be. Um, I've been drinking a lot of this over the last uh, five six months um, of uh, of lockdown madness, and uh, yeah, it's just a great kind of midweek pop and pour little wine. So there we go. On to the next wine. to the final wine of the tasting. Uh, here we have the dessert wine, which is the Jeux de Fouy, uh, 2017 vintage, 
uh, 13% by volume, uh, made by Domaine Lancien Cure. Uh, these guys are based over in Montbaziac, which is just east of Bordeaux uh, in the southwest of France. Uh, the grapes here, uh, we're looking at Semillon, uh, 90%, and then we have 10% of Muscadel. So some people compare Montbaziac to Sultern, uh, and it's even sometimes referred to as Petit Sultern, uh, though I really believe uh, this bottle stands up in its own right. A little bit of history about the Vigneron. Uh, here we have Christian Roche. He inherited a small portion of the land uh, from his family back in 1984. Uh, five years following on from that, he wanted to uh, make it be more independent, so he built some cellars uh, to be a lot more autonomous, and then shortly after that, he had a great passion for wanting to make the most out of the soils rather than sort of relying on pesticides like a lot of other winemakers in the area. He chose to go completely organic, uh, believing that healthy soils are going to create uh, better fruits and therefore result in a better wine. So let's have a little taste and see what we think of the hard work. So straight away we can see there just a lovely, rich, golden uh, colour in the glass. Great viscosity, so it's uh, looking sort of honeyed hue, absolutely beautiful. Uh, let's have a little smell, see what we think. So much flavour, so much complexity all coming out there. Just uh, really nice, rich honeyed notes, um, some white peach flavours, uh, so maybe some tropical fruits in there as well. It's uh, definitely making me want to have a sip, so uh, let's investigate further. Great, really similar um, on the palate there. I'm getting all the same same fruits, uh, some peach, that honey, um, just such visco viscosity there, really sort of sticks on the palate. Um, so the flavor sticks around for a really long time. Uh, absolutely love uh, sweet wine. Obviously with any uh, any sweet wine you need some good acidity to balance out the sweetness so it's not sickly uh, and this is a great example of a really well balanced, well structured wine all holding together. Um, it's beautiful, hope you're enjoying it as well. So thank you so much for taking the time to stop by and join us on this little tour through various wineries around the world in the little gold pack that we've made up and I uh, hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Cheers! Thank you.